But let me phrase it in this way. Yeah. Me, I want to be a celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is my first. This is some of my. This is my first achievement in the in my what in my passion. Yeah. Because you know, I have the chance. You know, the camera. So yeah. I'm really so happy because even if after me learning the barista things, I have to take it on. Yeah. You know, on TV shows, YouTube channels. Yeah. yeah I, I, I need I need I need to be known around the world. Yeah. So that's my passion. If you're out there, you want to be like Emma, you want to be a superstar, you want to be a social media influencer, house of talent will get you there. This is where you start and from then on you will be a superstar. Alright? Peter, oh, what about you? What do you my, do outside coffee? My passion. Okay. when I started learning that yeah, well, this is how coffee is but why is it that we produce coffee here and just sell it yeah. when we don't take it here we don't consume it here yeah. so one time when I had just uh, started the, uh, my training here uh, it, uh, I went back to Iganga yeah. and then I went to a, a hotel a, a, a very established hotel I, I will not mention its name mm. then I I wanted to see if I have people that know about coffee in hotels because I knew maybe probably big hotels serve coffee. Yeah. Uh, so my, to my dismay is that I introduced myself as a barista and everybody was like, what is a barista? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I said, a barista is a specialist uh, that makes coffee, yeah. a person who makes coffee yeah. for people to, you know, coffee like, you know, cappuccino, different kinds of you know, yeah. coffees and people were like very they green. Were nice. yeah, no. <laughs> I said, this is a big hotel. I expected to find here a coffee machine yeah. and nobody knows about it. Yeah. So it's, I think, um, incumbent of us to really transform uh, this entire community, the, the entire country to, you know, coffee, to learn about coffee yeah. and also to, you know, uh, give them uh, the, the, the advantages of coffee teach them about coffee and then later on they maybe consume it yeah. you know uh, rather than just selling it It's a beautiful day in Kampala, Uganda, and this is House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel, and this is the Coffee Break Show, the show where we talk about everything that involves coffee, from the tree to the cup, like the baristas like to say it. And again, you can catch us on our social media handles at House of Talent Television Uganda. That's on our Facebook and on our Twitter. And you can also catch us on our website, houseoftalentug.com. Let us know what's happening on your part of the world. Is it daytime? Is it nighttime? Do you have your cup of coffee ready? Do you have your pen and paper ready? Because today we have two gentlemen in the house. Before we have had guys who are baristas, guys who are very accomplished, people with brands, you know, but today we want to get to know from these guys who are students at Brew Plus what it takes to be a barista basically from the beginning so if you're out there wondering that you want to become a barista you want to become a student of coffee where do you start how do you start these guys are in the house to let you know how that's happening gentlemen you're very welcome to the show thank, thank you so you much. much very good to have you guys at our house of talent okay. uh, thank you for honoring our request to come here um to start off the show okay we want to know who you guys are all right i know part of 
who you guys are but you know there's someone out there seeing you guys for the first time wondering okay who are these good looking guys you know there must be some girls there wondering who are these good looking guys <laughs> seated there you know so i just want you guys to introduce yourselves we'll start off with you simon who are you and what do you do uh, thank you very much emma uh, my name is simon oibi yeah. uh, i'm a barrister to be uh, uh, I think I, I joined uh, Barista School earlier this year. Yeah. Uh, I was once, I didn't know about coffee and a friend of mine introduced me to a Barista School here in uh, Kamocha. Yeah. And then that's how I came to join uh, the coffee field. Yeah. It's amazing uh, because I was doing something else uh, very different from coffee. I didn't know about coffee completely. Yeah. I used to see coffee in the garden yeah. and I was wondering what coffee was yeah. exactly. So a friend of mine said, uh, uh, I, I've been so much pressurizing him because I wanted to go out there to, to look for you know some money yeah. uh, like any inquisitive man can be. Then he said, no, if you want to go, then I have something else that you can do. Yeah. Maybe if you want to go to the Middle East, so you can earn something a little bit more. Because mm. if you just go as like, uh, so many people go to the Middle East being as carries and maybe cleaners and so on, yeah. and they just kept paying maybe a little bit of just a little money. But yeah. he said to me, no, you come, you want, you, you go and learn barista, and then maybe you go and you, you're paid a little bit more. Yeah. So that's how I came to join a barista, barista school. school yeah. yeah, and up to now, we are still learning. I'm still planning on how to, you know, but yeah. it's a little bit amazing journey yeah. so far. Yeah. I, I find it interesting. Yeah. I find it very interesting. Coffee is a very interesting field, yeah. although people so much don't know about coffee. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of people actually don't know about coffee, and it's interesting to yeah, your journey. Most of the guys I've had on the show actually ended up somewhere in the Middle East, yeah. you know, somewhere in Dubai, somewhere in Kuwait. So it seems like uh, for Uganda, the place to go as a barrister yeah. is in the Middle, the Middle East. East. So that's where you want to make your money. Yeah. And I don't know why we keep going to the Middle East and we grow coffee here. I, I think that those people definitely don't, don't even grow coffee. Yeah. But people in Uganda who grow coffee yeah. don't know about coffee. And they don't even take coffee. Yes. This right. is something I've been asking myself severely i don't know why it is that is why you're here that is th th <laughs> some of the things we're going to discuss you know, okay. welcome to the show and uh thank you emma my name said please okay my name is emmanuel kasinzi yeah. and i'm also training to be a barista and let me first take you behind before i joined the barista school yeah. uh, i was doing a diploma in culinary arts so to make it simple it's cooking it's a cooking course yeah. So in the middle of my course, I had a friend who is a chef. He said, I can introduce you to a restaurant where I'm working so that you can also be practicing as you're studying. Yeah. So as I came to the restaurant, there was a shortage of waiters. So the, my boss told me a nice looking guy. I think before you go to the kitchen, you can first help me out and be serving. Yeah. Like for a month, when I get my waiters, yeah. you'll go to the kitchen. So I joined the, I joined the, I joined the waiters in the place. I start serving orders, cappuccinos, like days. No. So I used to love the way our barista used to present his cups. Yeah. Uh, for example, one day he presented some nice coffee. It was a cappuccino, very nice, presented. And I, I asked her, I asked him, what do you, how do you make this? He said, you go to a school and study. Yeah. So I used to love the way, the passion he had. So I said, one day I should learn this. So I kept on serving, serving his, serving his what, his orders. But I found out that most of the orders were according to the way he was feeling. You know, baristas present their cups according to the way they are feeling, yeah. according to the mood. In case he left home and he's sad, no, he's not happy. You will see the results in the cup. <laughs> in the cup. <laughs> but when you see something beautiful, just know you're so happy. Yeah. So yeah. The, the passion he had and the love he used to put in the cup yeah. really encouraged me to join the school. Not until I got to learn about Isaac at the, at the Pro Plus. Yeah. Then I came with my some of my friends, so we are now doing that course. Yeah. yeah. I like how you say that, you know, uh, how a barista feels and yeah. how the cup will come out. I think it's the same with the cooking you encounter with the cook, school. Yeah. Yes, how you feel basically is how uh, the final product will, you know, will be presented to you. Yeah. Um, Simon, you have something to say? Yeah, I was that? simply yeah. adding, I don't know how he, uh, the feelings usually turn out our results, yeah. but even when, um, for example, I've 
one day I was a teacher and then whenever a teacher comes to class what they feel at home or what they have in feeling yeah. is what exactly they have to you know they transfer uh, they translate to, to the, the children students. when yeah. somebody feels bad back home yeah. they will definitely come to class when they are mad yeah, you know true. so i think it is something related to feelings yeah no feelings are very important in whatever you do in life basically yeah. you know? how you wake up in the morning and how you feel basically sets the tone for uh-huh. the day if you wake up pissed off <laughs> yeah that's true your whole day basically is going yeah. to be like that so outside uh, coffee i believe you guys are passionate about other things yeah. emma what are you passionate about apart from coffee and culinary school what else do you do we had a guy here who uh, he said he was passionate about arsenal even if arsenal is losing like a problem now <laughs> you know so what else are you passionate about him my passion is to uh, yet I'm really so passionate at uh, I want but let me phrase it in this way yeah. me I want to be a celebrity <laughs> <laughs> and I think this is my first this is some of my this is my first achievement in the in my what in my passion yeah because you know I have the chance you know the camera so yeah. I'm really so happy because even if after me learning the barista things, have to take it on yeah. you know on tv shows youtube channels yeah, yeah I, I i need i need i need to be known around the world yeah. so that's my passion if you're out there you want to be like emma you want to be a superstar you want to be a social media influencer house of talent will get you there this is where you start and from then on you will be a superstar all right peter oh what about you what do you my, do outside coffee? my passion okay um <laughs> I like music so much. I I did music yeah. uh, from O level to A level. Yeah. Um, before I was thinking that uh, I would become maybe a producer. Uh, then um, I didn't go so much. I just ended in A level, mm. and then I dropped uh, because I had to look for life. I I, I I just grew up like myself, so I had to go to school. I went to school in Ginger yeah. so Ginger says groomed me to be. You know what I am now yeah. so I started looking for life and I had no money to you know then I also have to now start looking for the future you know pattern and then I started just like that and my dream just ended up so apparently I've been doing food uh, we have a restaurant in Kono it's called Diana food spot yeah. just along Kayunga Road uh, and then I, I like food so much. <laughs> I did not go to, you know, to, to, to the kitchen to learn how to cook, but yeah. I think I just have the passion. I, I taste food and I feel this is, you know, good food. Good food. Mm. So even when I'm home, I feel like I must be the one cooking, not my wife, because yeah. I really, I taste my food <laughs> and I, I feel it good, yeah. you know. So I think that's my passion. Yeah. I, I have passion in food and music. All the time I'm always in music. My yeah. phone is always running out of battery because, because of, of music. music. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think that's my passion. Well, it's good that we have a chef and someone who likes to eat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys definitely should you just see what day he cooks, yeah. you eat. Yeah, but it's always good to know, you know, uh, what we do outside uh, yeah. coffee mm-hmm. because life is big. It's a whole Thing. I also sit here on media, but I also play basketball. So you really okay. can't put your life in one perspective. You have to be a whole person. And I believe that with that kind of understanding, if in future you got someone, a customer who loves music, it would be easy for you to relate with them. If you you know met a chef who came, you know, for you to serve them, it would be easy for you to connect with them. So yeah. it's always good to include you know the whole of our lives into you know coffee and the different things that we do. So Emma, what was the first thing? You thought about coffee before you entered coffee. I remember for me, growing up, um, to us coffee was just kawa. You know, the one you buy from the shop at 100 shillings yeah, yes. and you go pour in a hot, you know, a hot cup and that's it. Yeah. You know, that's what I thought about coffee before. But after a while, I started learning, you know, there are baristas, you know, there are roasters. And it just opened up my mind, you know, to a lot of possibilities. So, Emma, what did you think about coffee before you joined, you know, the coffee school? <laughs> It's really so funny, but before I, I got to know more about coffee, yeah. I used to think that coffee is for the elderly men. Because you know, you know the way they sell coffee in the local way? Yeah. There's a way they tie it in their banana, are, are they banana leaves or what? Yeah, I don't the banana know. leaves, yes. Yeah, they tie it in that banana leaves, so they used to tell me that it's the old guys to eat the coffee, <laughs> so I have to gun. But, so I didn't know anything about coffee yeah. except that. Mm. Not until I got to learn more about coffee, about that it's really so nice. Yeah. And so, so it, it's rich of nutrients and a lot of other things. Yeah. 
Yeah. What about you, Simon? Yeah, it's funny uh, knowing about coffee. Mm. Like you said, I used to know coffee like you know a pack of 100 shillings, mm. and then you you know put it in water. That's what I I knew coffee was. Yeah. Little did I know it is a broad field. It's really a very broad field that people don't know about. Yeah. Um, so um, when a friend of mine introduced me to uh, Brew Plus, yeah. that's when I started learning that, yeah, well, this is how coffee is. But why is it that we produce coffee here and just sell it yeah. when we don't take it here, we don't consume it here? Yeah. So one time when I had just uh, started the, uh, my training here, uh, it, uh, I went back to Iganga. Yeah. And then I went to a, a, a hotel, a, a, a very established hotel, I, I will not mention its name. Mm. Then I, I wanted to see if I have people that know about coffee in hotels, because I knew maybe probably big hotels serve coffee. Yeah. Uh, so my, to my dismay is that I introduced myself as a barista and everybody was like, what is a barista? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I said, a barista is a specialist uh, that makes coffee, yeah. a person who makes coffee yeah. for people to, you know, coffee like, you know, cappuccino, different kinds of, you know, yeah. coffees and people who are like very they green. Yeah, no. <laughs> I say this is a big hotel. I expected to find here a coffee machine yeah. and nobody knows about it. Yeah. So it's, I think, um, incumbent of us to really transform uh, this entire community, the, the entire country, to you know, coffee to learn about coffee yeah. and also to you know, uh, give them uh, the, the, the advantages of coffee, yeah. teach them about coffee, and then later on they maybe come consume it, yeah. you know, uh, rather than just selling it yeah. because there are so many jobs related to coffee. Yeah. You know, as a barista, people don't know how much a barista earns. There are few baristas, very, very few. Yeah. And there are so much in a want. People want baristas and they are not there. Yeah. You know, so um, I, I think that it's time that maybe uh, the coffee, the, the government starts picking up coffee, maybe start serving in maybe uh, government offices. Yeah. And, you know, that's how coffee maybe will graduate to maybe even homes. Because yeah. when you start using coffee in the office, definitely you'll transfer the idea to home. Yeah. and say, no, I must have coffee at home. Yeah. So that's how people maybe will start using coffee. Yeah. But we cannot just sell coffee and we don't take it. <laughs> True. You know, Uganda is predominantly a tea country. You know, mm. we take a lot of tea and <laughs> people really haven't, you know, gotten into the whole coffee thing. It's looked at as coffee is for, you know, the high class people, uh -huh. the white yeah. people who yes. come to Uganda. Mm. Yet, you know, even a person at their homes, coffee is a basic thing. You can actually brew coffee at your home, you know, with very, like, the apparatus, like, the one you yeah. want to use after, mm. you know, to brew some coffee. Mm. Um, let's take it back a bit. Emma, what was your first day in class like, you know, <laughs> sat in class and probably Isaac is talking about, you know, all this Robusta coffee, it's like about coffee machines, you know, what was your first experience like, you know, that first day of class? <laughs> you know, Isaac always tells us that <laughs> what you expected and what was presented. So when, uh, when we are uh, reporting for the training, I used to think that you're going to be learning how to make flowers every day. You know, those flowers <laughs> they put on the cappuccino, yeah, yeah, yeah. being mm. on the machine every time. Yeah. Not until I got to know that you have to learn how to plant coffee, yeah. how, how coffee is harvested, the different methods that coffee undergoes. Yeah. You know, it is really something so wide and deep. So if you can't be patient to learn, that's why some of the baristas in Uganda are just baristas to make money, but not experts, not professional baristas, not baristas that can come out of their stations to come and express their customers why the taste of the coffee has changed. Yeah. Why, is the, why is this coffee today tasting differently? Yeah. For them, they know how, so long as you know how to put the flour on the cappuccino, That's you are it. barista, <laughs> you know? But now, at least now I know that. I know more about being a barista. Yeah, yeah. Now you know it's a, it's a way bigger it's thing. It's something not just way bigger. Coffee. Because yeah. anyone else can serve coffee, you know, yeah. but there's a level of professionalism mm. yeah. that you have to put into, into this. Um, Simon Peter, mm. I won't ask you the same question oh. because <laughs> I know you started way before him. Okay. Yeah. But um, in a class, basically, I believe that uh, for your groups, you're either five or less, okay? 
and there are very many different you know characters in a class okay everyone is different you know and um, being in a class of such people okay how do you how do you work together with them to ensure that at the end of the day all of you become good barristers because everyone learns at a different pace mm. okay yeah. uh, you might have someone who's better at the theory part you might have someone who's better at the machines okay so how are you working together with the people in your class to ensure that at the end of the day all of you are very good barristers okay um maybe to start with uh, uh my first day i want to i oh, want to sure. add <laughs> my first day and uh, when we came to class uh, isaac served us coffee yeah to me, I had not taken coffee that much, and uh, when he served coffee, it was very concentrated coffee, and I was I tasted it and I felt bad, <laughs> so <laughs> I asked for sugar. <laughs> I said no, but you add some sugar because really I'm not feeling it, <laughs> you know. So it's a funny test uh, that you get used to uh, gradually. Yeah. So um, we were like um, we were like seven in a class. Uh, we had some girls, three girls, and then four boys, yeah. and we, we would help each other every other time. Um, we help each other, we take notes and read, and then in the morning when we come, we discuss. And then um, even when we are doing uh, the latte art, we help each other. Please, you have to steam like this, maybe with uh, the, the espresso machine. You you have to exp uh, you know you know steam yeah. very well, and then um, you make. You make the latte art. Mm. You know, you, you help each other. Yeah. That's how we cope up to help each other. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day, you become a good barista. And many times they tell us that um, those people uh, in the middle is simply want you to have the latte art. But of course, the, the, the knowledge, the cough knowledge, is very much important. Yeah. And many people have gone to the middle is to make money, and also Europe, yeah. um, but they have no coffee knowledge. So. Uh, coffee uh, uh, Brew Plus has really given us the opportunity to yeah. learn about the coffee yeah. and also get more about coffee. All right. Um, yeah. Before we get into a break, mm -hmm. um, Emmanuel, uh, you said you were working in a restaurant, yeah. and um, you know the chef saw you as a good-looking guy, and he's like, you know what? Go serve. You know, go be a waiter. Okay. Yeah. How important are your looks? Okay. <laughs> when it comes to being a barrister, <laughs> you know, it, it might not only be the way you look, you know, facially, but the way you organize yourself, the way you dress, you know, how important is that in making a barrister? Um, your looks and the, and the way you dress and the way you do your things is really so important in being a barrister. Yeah. Because this is a technical, a technical, a technical what? Process. Yeah. You have to be someone that is really so clean something that someone that is so smart you don't have to just go get cups anywhere and you serve yeah. you know I'll, I, 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 who Isaac always tells us that you must first preheat your cup before presenting presenting your coffee yeah. but you find out that some of the baristas before presenting your your coffee you just go you wash the cup you, you know you rinse it there in water dry up and give what the custom. and serve the, some just even don't pick from the store and put yeah. that if you find cases where there is there are cockroaches in what in the, the coffee. coffee. You know, <laughs> so you have to be someone yeah. that is really so clean and organized yeah. so that you can produce clean products. Yeah. Uh, yeah. To add on Emma is that uh, I, I happen to be also in the restaurant. But you know, usually the looks is what gives the person taking your drink or even taking your food the appetite. Yeah. You know <laughs> when a customer when you're serving a customer, yeah. they first of all they will look at how you presented yourself, how you are. So that's where you find that many restaurants would, would look for very cute girls yeah. to serve because the appetite comes when you look at the person. Yeah. Oh, this is a nice person. And then you, the look of the what you're serving as yeah. well. Okay. So, you know, it's about how you present yourself. So you, that's very important. Emma. It's, yeah. it's really important that his looks are, yeah. you know. Yeah, true, true, true. Mm -hmm. Well, if you just tuned in, this is the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. In the house, I have Emmanuel and Simon Peter with me, students at Brew Plus studying to become barristers and something big in the coffee industry. My name is Ateng Emmanuel, and it's good to have you guys watching. We'll take a break right now, but we'll be right back discussing the perspectives of students in the coffee business. Stay right there. This is House of Talent Television.
Welcome back to the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Atang Emmanuel and with me in the studio, Emmanuel, my namesake, and Simon Peter from Brewplus. These guys are students who are starting to become baristas. And before we left off, we we're just basically discussing who they are, what they do, what drew them into the coffee business. And um, coming back, we're going to discuss their perspectives on the coffee business. What did they think? What do they want to do? What do they want to achieve? Um, Peter, I'll go to you first. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you told us who you are, what you do, you know, where you started your first day. You know, you actually didn't like the cup of coffee you were served. Mm. But, you know, after some time, you know, the test started uh, getting to you. So we just want to know, because coffee is a process. Yes. You know, the barristers always say it's from the tree to the cup. Mm. Okay, I believe mm. that that is one of the first things you actually study in barrister school. Yes. So for the people out there who do not understand, what is the tree part? I believe that is planting. Mm. Okay, so if you could just take us through the planting process. I have a seed, mm. I need this seed to grow. Mm. Okay, what do I do with it? Uh, so, well, um, uh, initially uh, I just thought that uh, the seeds just, uh, you, you know, you just find a plant that is just there and it will just give, you know, coffee seeds. Yeah. Uh, but little did I know that, uh, you know, you have the dry coffee seeds and then you make a nursery bed. And then uh, for a certain period of time, like uh, when the, 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 the seedlings are mature enough is when the replanting, uh, the, the, you know, you plant them to the garden. Yeah. Yeah, so um, that's how coffee, the coffee planting process is. Mm -hmm. the, the seedlings, uh, from the seed to the seedlings and then uh, to the garden to, 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 to become now big plants. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, one time I was uh, in class and then uh, someone was telling us that uh, for you to become a good coffee farmer, you, it, it's, it's basically, you, you, if you start as a barista, you can, start, you, you can start a farm and become a very good coffee farmer. Yeah. You know, the reason as to why we produce very bad coffee here in Uganda is that people don't taste their coffee. But when people, when you know the taste of the coffee, yeah. you can easily go back to the garden and produce very nice coffee. Yeah. But you know, people are after money, they just make, uh, grow coffee, pick it, and then after picking the coffee, they just put it anywhere and then take it to the market for selling. Yeah. Uh, it's not like that. The coffee must really have to take a very good process to reach to the, the final consumer yeah. who is taking it in the cup. Because what happens in the garden is what a person in the cup is going to have. Yeah. yeah. So um, that is how coffee is. It's yeah. from... Although it's a very long process, it, 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 people are really very impatient with the coffee because um, it takes quite long, like three to five years for the coffee to uh, really become the coffee we, we the know. Quality yeah, yeah. Yes. So, to add on a little yeah. on what he's saying, you know, the, the process through which coffee undergoes affects the price and the quality of the coffee at yeah. the end. So, Wanda was trying to search on the different varieties of coffees that we have in the world and I was able to find out that black ivory is the most expensive coffee yeah. so I kept on wondering how is black ivory the most expensive coffee mm. so as I went deep to search the process bl black ivory goes through it's really so funny that those guys get the coffee the berries the, the yellow ones red mm. and they feed them to elephants so that so the berries go through the the digestive system of the yeah. elephant and when the when the the elephant poops <laughs> so they go and pick the remaining what okay. processed ready, processed coffee beans yeah. so that's that that by the time they are out they are the processed full of flavors <laughs> So, so there is this, coffee is really so amazing. It's, it, it's, it's amazing so, so amazing. coffee can come from yeah. <laughs> that process. Because I, I had, in case you put seven kilograms, yeah. you can pick like a kilogram out of the so elephant it's, poop. So it, it's, it's a very hard process. It's really so hard. <laughs> so, so but, hard. But if it's that expensive, I mean, it's worth the wait. Yeah, it's mm. really worth. Yeah, it's worth the wait. So, speaking about black, black ivory, we have different kinds of, you know, coffee. Yeah. Okay? Which ones do we grow in Uganda and in which parts of Uganda do we find the different types? Uh, we have Robusta, yeah. um, a Robusta coffee and then uh, uh, Robusta is basically in, in the mountainous areas yeah. of Uganda, I think around Kapchorwa yeah. and um, uh, the, the, the slopes of uh, Mount Erugua. Yeah. 
and then we also have the arabica is it and the and by the way, let me tell you the funny bit of the coffee story mm. they say that um coffee by the way africa is a rich continent because they say that the arabica coffee was initially found in ethiopia in ethiopia in the ethiopian highlands there yeah. So most of the coffee that you see that and, and Arabica is the, is the most exported and traded coffee. So that means Africa is a rich what? continent. Yeah. And the Robusta was also found in Uganda around the Lake Victoria Basin. Yeah. So that makes really Africa and Uganda to be really so, so great. Though Uganda is also in Africa, but <laughs> <laughs> I always make sure that Uganda stands out. Yeah, I think Uganda in Africa is actually yeah. one of the leading exporters of uh, coffee. coffee. Yeah. yeah. But like you said earlier, it's amazing that we can actually export it, mm-hmm. but we don't consume it yeah. here, which is a very big gap that I think we need to explore, mm-hmm. right? Moving on from there, um, to Simon Peter. Mm-hmm. We have talked about, you know, the different kinds of coffee. We have talked about how you start growing that seed, you know, uh, before you transplant it uh, to the garden. So, what are some of those things that I need to make sure I'm doing to the coffee seeds after planting them? They're still in the nursery bed before taking them. Do I have to water them, keep them out in the sun? You know, what are the different methods or strategies that I have to do to make sure that by the time I transplant this coffee to the garden, you know, it's, it, it has reached the point whereby it's transplanted. Yeah, so uh, after <coughs> the, the seedlings have germinated, yeah. of course you need to take very good care of the seedlings. Uh, you, they don't need to get so much exposed to the sunshine, of course yeah. they will dry up. And they also don't need to, you know, get a lot of, you know, uh, water. You need to keep them in a moderate state yeah. until they are grown up a little bit stronger to withstand the sunshine. Yeah. And then that's when you are good and enough to go to transplant them to the garden. Okay. And in the garden, you must give, uh, you know, the good spacing, the, the spaces. You know, people, farmers out there think that you, you plant one here, one there, and, you know, you plant many trees to get, you know, more yields, and that's wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's usually the spacing that you give to the plant to, you know, give the plant more space, yeah. you know, to give the nutrients. Uh, that the plant will give you more seeds, yeah. you know. But <clears throat> you know, farmers think that one plant after the other is a good way to go. Yeah. That's not good enough. Okay, so you have to take care of that. Yeah. If you're watching us from home, these guys are speaking like professionals, but they are not yet <laughs> professionals. They are on their way, starting to become baristas. But you can already see what the barista education is doing for them. It's not just about serving a cup of coffee, you know, putting art. In a latte but this uh, basically discovering where coffee started from where are we as a country in coffee and yeah if you're out there thinking of entering the coffee business it's a very good thing for you if you're out there lockdown has caught you you're a student you're at home you don't know what to do consider going to barista school i believe that it will be a very important thing for you emmanuel we have planted our coffee we have transplanted it we have taken care of it we have made sure that you know everything is okay stem for harvest yeah you know, how do we harvest the coffee and how do we process it to make sure that we get that good quality okay so you know pro- coffee goes through three processes yeah. there's what we call the dry process the wet and the honey process yeah. but in uganda mostly we use the dry and the wet process so i'm going to just go a little deep in the, in the three processes yeah. but you know uh, in the dry process you go you have to pick your the red ones clean them dry them up you know yeah. so as you're drying them they are fermenting as they're fermenting they are the 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 sugars are going deep they are going deep in the seed yeah. so that at the end when the consumer is testing the coffee is able to feel the nutrients that are in the coffee yeah. so in the wet <laughs> they just they get they, they don't dry but they just pulp after pulping then they also take it and what and pu- and, and remove the what the husks, the, the husks. Yeah. so it's coffee is really so so amazing that the process through which it goes through affects the the flavor yeah. the taste yeah. so really that's coffee yeah so to peter what are some of these flavors we can get out of coffee because i believe that you know the way you roast it mm-hmm. will ultimately be, uh, uh, that, that's the way it will come out as a flavor. You know, you have the really dark roast, mm. and then you have the brown roast. You know, so what are some of these flavors that we can get out of it? Uh, there are flavors like uh, caramel, um, 
uh, there are flavors like um, uh, I chocolate, the chocolate. Yeah. Then uh, there are so many flavors. I, I I cannot recall everything right now, but yeah. Yeah, I think there are so many. There are many flavors actually. Yeah. There are many I can't recall. Okay. Then studying. Okay. Um, I know that there's caramel, there's chocolate, there are all these different kinds of flavors, mm. okay? Have you ever thought, you know, you just sit there one day and think, hey, there's caramel and chocolate, why don't I create some chili coffee or something, you know? <laughs> yeah. The, Have you thought about, you know, creating something for yourself? Yeah. Like a different I, kind of flavor. Actually, the flavors come right from the garden. Mm. You always tell us that um, when the plant is in the garden, what nutrients it gets involved in with, is how the flavor what the flavor will come. Yeah. And when you when you grow coffee together with um, with maybe jackfruit, uh, some plants around jackfruit tree, yeah. you're going to find out that as you're taking this coffee in the cup, you will always feel that there's some smell, there's some flavor of a jackfruit in yeah. that coffee. So I don't know how it comes about, but it, it depends on what nutrients it has gotten with in yeah. the garden. Uh, you know, that's how the flavors of the coffee will, will definitely come out. So if I want some strawberry coffee, I just yeah, have to it, make sure that, you know, within my plant, uh, I put yes, some, yes. <laughs> some That's how funny coffee is. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I think it really picks up, you know, scents from yeah, different yeah. plants really quick. Yes. Yeah, so we have processed our coffee, you know, um, now it's moving on to the next step. How do we store coffee? Because I believe that, you know, you just don't put it there, and, you know, that's it. How do we store coffee? Coffee is packed in bags, yeah. bags that are able to pass out air and also bring in some air. Mm. And when you and when you you pack you you're, you're keeping those bags, they must be on a raised pallet. You should not allow what coffee bags to be on the ground. Why? Because they may gain the moisture from mm. the ground. Yeah. So you have to put it on a raised pallet. And the and the coffee beans and the coffee and the sacks should not touch the walls. So coffee is really so weird yeah. that you must take care of it. Any mistake you do, it affects the whole the process. Whole process. Mm -hmm. So that's how you, you put it in the bag until you wait for each time to, yeah. to be taken out. So you talked about air, you know, I don't need air in that bag. So which yeah. air goes out, which air comes in? Yeah. Which one? Um, coffee, you lose carbon dioxide from the coffee. Yeah. So that's the coffee, the, the, the air that goes out. Yeah. yeah. So you need to keep it sealed you need the whole to, time? No, you need to keep, not sealed, mm -hmm. but in the bag so that you can be able to be yeah. losing the air. Okay, so yeah. if I don't take good care of it at the end of the day, my cup is really going to yeah. Yeah, yeah, but be that good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting. So coffee is like a baby, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's like a baby. It's a baby that you really, you know, have to take very good care of. Right from the garden. For the final result. Okay, yeah. um, we've talked about, you know, the coffee process. And um, at the end of the day, you guys, want to be baristas but I believe that coffee is not limited to being a barista yeah so to Peter what are some of uh, these different aspects that we can get involved in you know apart from just being a barista you know what other professions are there within you know the coffee industry uh, well to I think uh, a farmer is, is a basic uh, the, the foundation of coffee yes. um, so you can be a farmer you can be a coffee dealer and there are so many coffee dealers, uh, you know, then you can also be a barista and then um, you can also be a coffee roaster, a coffee roaster, a yes, kappa. a kappa. So yes, there are, so, there are many so many people that are involved in the coffee. Yeah, yeah but th these are all jobs that we are not looking out to. Yeah. Um, we, we, we just look at coffee just like that and we export these jobs abroad. Yeah. Because when we export this coffee, uh, these jobs are created for people there. Yeah, okay. You know, you have to be a roster, there's a roster, uh, there's a kappa, you know, a person who tests these different coffees yeah. to see which one has the best taste. Yeah. So, and then there's also a barista and baristas are not here. They are there in you know, those countries. Yeah. You know, we are exporting a lot of jobs. Yeah. And then maybe we only have farmers, but which uh, farmers are also not very much educated about coffee. They yeah. don't know about so much yeah. coffee. So we... You can yeah. be a trainer. You, you can also be a trainer. <laughs> we are in school. <laughs> yeah. So we are acquiring knowledge. Yeah. You know, then later on, maybe we can also have our own schools yeah. and train children, I mean people. Yeah. You know, so maybe, yeah. So yeah. that is it. 
Well, you're hearing it there from Peter and Emmanuel. We have them in the house today on the coffee break. If you're out there, you're a barista, you're a professional in the coffee industry, you know, shout out to these guys. Send them a message. Let them know that you support them. Let them know that you are waiting for them, you know, um, when they get out of school. If you want to give them a job, also here they are. You can comment down in the comment section and just show them some love. We'll take a break right now for you to get a cup of coffee, for you to get some rest, but we will be right back. And after, we shall be brewing a cup of coffee. We want to see how much the students have learned at Brew Plus. We'll take a break right now. This is the coffee break on House of Talent Television. It's amazing how time runs. We have already had, you know, the first part of the show and I know what we can talk and uh, like they say, until the cows go home, <laughs> you know, when we start talking <laughs> about coffee. But you're still tuning into House of Talent Television, The Coffee Break, me, Emmanuel, with Emmanuel in the house and Simon Peter. We've been talking about their perspectives as students at Brew Plus, you know, in the coffee industry, what have they learned, what do they want to become. And the last part of the show is always for brewing. These guys have talked about the theory. Can they do the actual practical? We're going to find out as they brew a cup of coffee. So guys, I've talked about, you know, the theoretical part, you know, the coffee from the tree, the planting, what you guys want to be, how you got into, you know, the coffee business and all these things, what you're studying. Um, before we get into the brewing of this coffee, yeah, I just want to ask um, Emmanuel, what are your future plans? I know you just don't want to get out and become a barista. Do you want to open a coffee shop? Like you said, you want to be a superstar, you know? So what are your future plans when it comes to, you know, coffee after school? What do you want to do? Yeah, um, I have some of the pastry skills. Yeah. So after me learning these things and I get some little money, I'm planning to start a coffee shop and I'll have a pastry site in my coffee shop whereby yeah. my customers can come and take my coffee as they eat some of my baked things. Yeah. So that's, those are some of my plans. So you plan on, you know, opening your own uh, spot? My, my own spot. Very good. What about you, Peter? Uh, I plan on becoming a farmer. Yeah. I really have plans of, you know, starting up, um, uh, maybe after getting some capital, you know, it's best to become a farmer because you are everything. You, you know, you give direction to uh, the, the entire process. Yeah. Because I have now the coffee knowledge it's best that I got the film and also farmers out there learn from me. Yeah. Yeah, it's best if you become a barista because you test the coffee, then you go back and become the farmer, yeah. uh, which is not the case now. Yeah. So I think that if I become a barista, I have the capital to begin, I have to begin up a farm, I'll go back and begin up a farm. Yeah. Maybe also I have my own coffee, pro, you know, sell yes, yes, my, yes. my own coffee yeah. and not have middlemen in between because coffee is really very much expensive yeah. Yeah. i like that i have both of you on the show because earlier this guy said he's a chef you like to eat food <laughs> so you connected there <laughs> yes. and now you know you want to become you know basically a farmer yes. and you know he wants to open up a coffee shop so you want to supply, ah, yes, him I supply. <laughs> <laughs> yes. so i think you guys should really stay close together because you know that kind of relationship yes. is very important well we're going to get into brewing a cup of coffee now um i'll hand it over to these guys uh we have our you know stuff here that we're going to use first of all you guys have to tell us what is in front of us, what we're going to brew, you know, basically the whole process. But before we start, I just want to tell everyone at home, we talked earlier about hygiene. Hygiene is very important when it comes to the coffee business, you know, basically it affects, you know, the whole process, mm -hmm. okay? So before you start making your cup of coffee, what you need to do is make sure that you're clean. And which parts are you going to use most? The, the hands. hands. Okay, so here at House of Talent, we always encourage you to use, you know, sanitizer always sanitize before because even the times that we're living in everywhere you go you have to sanitize and make sure that you protect yourself protect your customers and basically protect everyone who's around you so before we get into brewing our cup i just want to you know sanitize these guys you can watch at home there so that you can know that our hands are clean thank you before we start this so guys i'll just hand it over to you what do we have in front of, what do we have in front of us basically and uh, what are we going to be brewing for the people at home yeah Thank you so much. So I'm going to teach you how to make co simple coffee at home. In case you're able to get yourself a French, this is called a French press yeah. or a plunger. So I'm going to really take you through. Uh, so we have our hot water here. Yeah. And this is our kettle. Yeah. yeah. So you first have to, to put your hot water in because you put your hot water in the kettle. 
So to Simon Peter, how hot should this water be? Mm, the water must be really hot. Mm. It must be 100 degrees. Yeah. Yeah, it must really be hot. Okay. Yes. So sometimes I've seen, you know, some baristas coming with uh, thermometers basically to test how much, you know, yeah. how hot the water is. You know? uh -huh. So we have to make sure that it's heated to a certain point. Yes. Okay. All right, so we've got to that also depends on where you are. There yeah. are places that are really very much hot, yeah. and you don't need something too much hot. Okay. Yeah. So. So you need to keep it moderate. You need it varies yeah. where you are. Okay. Yeah. So some people think that is not more than like not a hundred. Yeah. Others think to sixty because yeah. where they are, it's really so hot, and yeah. you don't need something really so hot. Okay. Yes. So as a professional barista, yeah. you know that you have to first preheat your vessels mm -hmm. before using them, because you're not supposed to provide to serve a beverage in a cold vessel. Yeah. So you have to first preheat it. Mm. So after making sure that your vessel is hot, I think the temperature is now enough. Yeah. So initially in the restaurants, you have to measure, you must have a measuring scale. Yeah. But this is just homework. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you're, you're, you're making your coffee at home, simple work. Yeah. So you have to get your, scof your coffee. So you're free to put the number of scoops you want, yeah. depending on the on the level of coffee you want, on yeah. the concentration. So the more coffee I put, the more you want, the stronger, the, the stronger, stronger it gets. Okay. So we are three, so I'll put three. So as you continue that, um, Simon Peter, yes. I've heard in some instances people ordering cold coffee. Yes. So does cold coffee go through the same process before it comes out in the cup? Uh, you use uh, uh, ice blocks yeah. to make the coffee cold. Okay. Yeah, you use the same process, yeah. but you can use the ice cubes. To make the, the so coffee. basically it starts off as hot coffee yes then i put in yes. the ice cubes yes. and it ends up as cold, cold coffee. yes so does that kind of ice affect the you know the flavor at the end of the day or the taste of the coffee the test will remain the same but yeah. of course the coffee is cold okay yes but with a little bit more of water yes okay so mm. let's continue we've so, got into that point so after putting your coffee in the vessel yeah you're supposed to pour the water okay in a circular form eh? Actually, that is what I wanted to test. You guys have passed the test. <laughs> For every barista that has come here, the first thing they did was preheat. Mm. Okay, and when they were pouring the water, it was in a circular motion. Yes, they just yes. don't pour water, you know. Yes. And you know like why? For tea. Yeah, why do we do so this? So that all the dry spots can get the water. You okay. soak everything. You yeah. soak everything in water. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. So if you guys hadn't done this, I was going to go back to your teacher and say, boss, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> These guys did a refresher <laughs> course. But you just doing simple things like this really shows, you know, the level of professionalism that you guys have already acquired even in, you know, the little time that you have been in school, which is a very good thing. So for, for the people out there, it's encouraging, you know, to see yeah. you guys. How, how long have you guys been in school anyways? Mm -hmm. How long, Emma, have you been there? Uh, it's now two weeks two, so two far, weeks, yeah. but you can see what I can do. Yeah, in two weeks you can actually <laughs> do this. I, I'm yeah. a little bit older and yeah. uh, I've taken time, yeah. although I just come and go back because yeah. I don't live here. Okay. Yeah, apparently I live in Mukono. Yeah. So basically, a about a month for you guys, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so after pouring our coffee in a circular motion, you know, what next in the process? You stir. Okay, you stir the coffee? Yeah. And why should we start the coffee, basically? So that all the spots can get water. Okay, so we have to also degas it in a way. Yeah. Right. So if you're watching from home, these guys have been in a coffee school for no more than a month. And if they can do this within a month, imagine what you can do within two months or three months, you know. And I believe that, you know, at this point, we have to leave our coffee to brew. Yeah, okay. For four to five minutes. For four to five minutes. So yeah. as our coffee brews and, you know, we're coming towards the end of the show, I just want you to look into the camera, okay? I know there's someone out there, you're a cute guy, you know, wanting to be <laughs> an influencer, you already spent two weeks uh, in school. I want you to look into that camera and tell someone out there who's very unsure, should I join the coffee business, should I not join the coffee business? Just look there and encourage them, you know, what have you learned and what can you tell them to pull them also into the coffee business? Yeah, to someone out there that would like to become a barista or join the coffee industry, if it's possible, you can even start now, because this is the best place to go. You know, I used to like working simple things. You know, I don't like hard work, because yeah. you can see my <laughs> I'm so weak. Yeah. So, 
the the good thing about coffee you're paid to do your passion yeah you know you do your things very simply and very nice and then you're paid good money yeah. so if you have a chance to learn such things please just join yeah. and the market is there because most of the people are not aware about this yeah. people are not aware about coffee coffee is something that is really too wide yeah. i'm sure after learning here after my school there are so many other opportunities waiting for yeah, me so if you have a chance just join <coughs> interesting yeah. what about you peter uh well uh the same thing uh, I, I would like to you know to, to call upon my mates uh, people who have not yet learned about coffee that there are many opportunities uh, in the coffee uh, field yeah. very, very many and very virgin the co coffee industry is still very virgin and yeah. we've not explored anything in the coffee so uh, there are many opportunities just come right now and join because you will be the first people there yeah. you know you'll be the first people in Uganda probably uh, one time I heard about government's plans about uh, on you know giving coffee to you know so maybe you can have a job uh, as a barista somewhere in the government office yeah. You know, so um, there are many, many opportunities. Even going to Europe as just a barrister, you can go to Europe and yeah. you know make money. Yeah. So there are many plans. So people should come now and join Brew Plus. Yeah. Brew Plus has given us this knowledge, and he's still giving out the knowledge. Yeah. So let them come. Let everybody come and join the coffee business. Yeah, you know, I like that. Right now, uh, there are very few people yes. actually. Okay. Yes. And um, for you to get into something when it's new, mm. okay, you will have more experience than mm. the other guys, mm. you know. But if you want to get into it when it's really populated, everyone is yeah. like how we have our kids in town, everywhere, yeah. everywhere you can. <laughs> like, how, like, uh, like how Chameleon <laughs> dominated the music industry yeah. he, uh, when he just came in. Yeah. But everybody is now yeah, in Indonesia. Now doing music. So, so <laughs> yeah, it would actually be a very good time for you out there to get into the coffee industry now the courses are not that expensive i mean take it as an investment you're investing something into your future and it's something that is going to work for you for you know very many years to come yeah um before we started the show we're just talking about how you guys you know there are some people out there who are watching you guys you know so i just want to give you an opportunity to say hi to your you know to your fans for you also be a superstar to the guys you study with so look into that camera and just say hi to your people shout out my fans out there it's your boy caesar <laughs> I know you know me, so I say hi to my friends at Daddy Quick Restaurant. By the way, Daddy Quick Restaurant is the best place to go. Yeah. If you want to taste nice coffee, Daddy Quick Restaurant. Yeah. Along Sapolo Road, you just find us there. Yeah. Right. yeah. Sapolo, the Boise side? No, the, oh. That, oh, the, 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 the old camera side. side. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Yes, Peter, what about you? Okay, um, I want to say hi to my brother. I have a brother who went to... To, to Saudi, I brought him to the coffee. Yeah. They uh, they introduced me first, so I introduced him. And he left. And him. he left me. So it's <laughs> very. <laughs> so he's uh, he's actually watching right? Yeah. He's called Paul. Yeah. He's a barrister now, and then I also want to say hi to everybody who is watching mm -hmm. and my friends, uh, uh, my workmates here in Mukono at uh, Tiana Food Spot. Food uh, Tiana Food Stop is just along Kayunga Road. If you ever come to yeah. you know Mukono, just along Kayunga Road, yeah. along uh, around the tax park, you mm. just find Tiana Food Stop, okay. and we can serve you food. You know. So if I come, they have a free. You, you, know, you I have you, some free food for myself. Yes, yes. You've heard it here. You guys are the witnesses. When I get to Mukono, I have some free food. Mm. Yeah. I also want to send my shout outs, <laughs> basically, to every barista who has been on this show. Thank you very much, you guys, for you know coming to, to just discuss coffee with the different people. For the guys who are behind there in production, I know we always don't give them you know a lot of credit, but they're there. They're always waiting to take the coffee after it's brewed. I know they're already eyeing it. <laughs> yeah, and we've come to that part of the show where it's uh, almost coming to the end. I think our coffee has been brewing, you know, for yeah. at least five minutes. Yeah. And I think we can go ahead and serve it, you know, as we come towards the end of the show if you're watching at home you've also been waiting for your coffee to brew get your cup it's time for us to get it into the cup like we say from tree to cup this is the cup part please okay so you cover very well yeah so you push down yeah as it filters itself eh? see yeah, so you should also make sure that you know you always have a very good filter yeah. when you're using this you know the filter paper is, is a very important part of the whole process mm. wow. so you can see our coffee as you can see we brewed a very good cup of coffee 
Yes. So, do we get it into the cups and tossed off as we, you know, close the show? So, yeah. what happens is that uh, the reduce, uh, the residues go down. Down, yes. As you can see, this is called a plunger. When you insert this, you know, you plunge it, mm. you press it, and then the residues of the coffee will go down, and then the liquid. Uh, this is now our brew. Yeah. Uh, this is our beverage that we are going to test. Yeah. So after I can't use the residue again, uh, I have yeah. to get fresh coffee. Or if I can you just want, keep adding water to it. You, if you want, yeah. you can use it again. If you don't want, you there are so many things that they make out of this recipe ah, okay. anyway. So you can't keep it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come towards the end of our show. Uh, Emmanuel will go ahead and serve yes, us our cup of coffee. But if you're out there and uh, you really want to learn about coffee, you can always contact the different baristas in the different coffee schools. They will be able to help you. If you're at home, you're in lockdown. I know that uh, school hasn't yet really begun. Don't sit at home. Always get something that can add value to your life. And getting into the coffee business is a very good idea. At House of Talent, we also bring you the Coffee Break Show, where we let you guys know everything that you need to know about coffee. We have fun with different baristas. We have fun with different rosters, basically different people in the coffee industry. And um, our cups have been served. And uh, I'll just have Emma take one. And also Peter will take the other and you know, we'll just <laughs> toss off so you guys can take a cup each. This has been the coffee break on House of Talent Television. My name is Emmanuel. I had uh, Emma with me in the house who is going to be a future superstar. So you should get to know him now before he becomes a superstar. So that when he becomes famous, he can remember you. Uh, we also had uh, Simon Peter in the house who um, is a barista, you know, he wants to become a farmer in future. I believe that, you know, you're going to export a lot of coffee, yeah. you know. These guys are going to be something else in future. If you're out there, you're a barista, you're a kappa, uh, you're a researcher in coffee, do give us a shout out. Let us know if you want to get on the show so that we can basically build a very good community of baristas. But from us here, we're going to toast off to the coffee break on House of Talent Television. Thank you guys very much for coming as we enjoy our coffee. Have a good day. This has been the Coffee Break on House of Talent Television. My name is Atengi Manuel. Till next time.